The Great Wall of Lagos was built to protect Victoria Islands and the early phases of Lucky's shoreline from coastal erosion. Prior to the construction of the Great Wall, the Atlantic Ocean's waves regularly flooded Victoria Island and the early phases of Lekki, posing a threat to countless lives and businesses. The Great Wall of Lagos, which will eventually stretch to 8.5 kilometers in length, has already accomplished its primary objective of protecting Victoria Island from coastal erosion. Once completed, the wall will also protect Lekki's early phases from coastal erosion. To comprehend the Great Wall of Lagos, we must begin at the beginning of the eco-Atlantic city story. So, sit back, subscribe and turn on your notifications for we're about to take a deep dive into the Atlantic coastline of Africa's most vibrant city Lagos, Nigeria. Since the beginning of the last century, Records have indicated that sand and sedimentary materials along the coast of the region of West Africa have been transported from west to east by ocean currents. This process of transportation is known as a littoral drift. Examples of littoral drift disruptions have included the construction of dams, large port developments, and other disruptions to the coast such as shipwrecks. In these cases, large amounts of sand were deposited in some locations and significant erosion occurred in other locations. In Lagos, the creation of the rock moles at the entrance to the port of Lagos initiated the interruption to the littoral drift. Until the existing port in Lagos was completed, large ships needed to anchor offshore because the Commodore Channel was shallow. To ensure that cargo destined for Lagos port is brought to the port, a fleet of smaller vessels is sent to the larger vessels anchored offshore to transfer the cargo into the port, a laborious and very inefficient process, there was an obvious and long overdue upgrade to the port of Lagos which would aid in the growth of trade and the economy. The engineers at the port of Lagos used the moles east and west to make access to the port better. The two moles that were constructed for the dredging of the Commodore Channel allowed for the dredging of the port of Lagos making it possible for larger vessels to dock in the port of Lagos. The moles were built in 1905 and finished in 1912 allowing larger trade ships to enter and exit the port of Lagos freely, increasing the volume of trade through this vital new trade hub. However, the moles had to be built to allow for littoral drift. On the west side of the port of Lagos, the beach sediment that had previously been deposited in Victoria Island and Lekki was now trapped. Once the erosive power of the sea was unleashed to the east of the Commodore Channel, the Bar Beach, and the coastline of the Lekki Peninsula, there was significant erosion of the coastline. More than 100 years after the construction of the moles, the entirety of Bar Beach, which runs alongside it, had eroded away leaving the island of Victoria directly exposed to violent ocean surges. Tens of thousands of businesses, residents and properties on Victoria Island and Lekki were now under severe threat. Urgent action was required to avert an ecological disaster and the potential loss of the busy commercial hub of Lagos, Victoria Island. Lagos coastal city of Victoria Island was on the verge of being inundated by a surge of ocean water that would have originated in the Atlantic Ocean. After the shoreline was eroded away at Bar Beach, the coast road, a Matubela Way, fell into the ocean. Substantial flooding resulted in the abandonment of nearby businesses and homes. Victoria Island residents' lives and livelihoods had been put in danger. It became increasingly clear that millions and millions of square meters of developed land was about to be lost to the ocean if nothing was done soon. Lagos, Nigeria's most important financial center, was in danger. With Victoria Island serving as one of the city's central business districts, the state faced not only the loss of valuable land used by thousands daily, but also the loss of revenue from this bustling district, which would have had a catastrophic effect on the city's economy. It is estimated that if Victoria Island had been inundated by coastal erosion, approximately 466 billion naira in annual rental revenue would have been lost. This figure does not include the gross domestic product generated by the businesses and residents on Victoria Island. 
Finally, if the onslaught of ocean surges continued, Victoria Island would have sunk into the Atlantic Ocean. Without Victoria Island's protection, the rest of Lagos' densely populated areas, including Akwai, Lagos Island, and all of the other communities along the Lagos Lagoon, would now bear the brunt of the relentless ocean surges. Governor Bola Ahmed Tainubu, recognizing the critical need for action, called for solutions. South Energy X Nigeria Limited, the city planners and designers of Eco Atlantic City, collaborated with marine engineers Royal Haskening to develop the project and presented it to the Lagos state government for consideration as a cost free solution to the problem of coastal erosion. South Energy X and Royal Haskening's sustainable solution called for reclaiming land lost to 100 years of coastal erosion and erecting a sea revetment to permanently protect Victoria Island from the Atlantic Ocean's onslaught. The design and testing of a seawall, capable of withstanding the worst storms in 1,000 years took place at the Danish Hydraulic Institute in Copenhagen. In July 2006, the Lagos state government and South Energy X Nigeria Limited signed a concession agreement. The Great Wall of Lagos is a large sea revetment that protects the new city and Victoria Island from flooding. Royal Haskening Marine Engineers from Holland designed the wall, bringing over 100 years of experience in urban planning and development. Royal Haskening designed a wall that would adequately protect the city from the Atlantic. Royal Haskening then took the design to the Danish Hydraulic Institute, who built a full-scale model of the wall for Eco-Atlantic City. The seawall experienced the worst waves in a 1,000-year cycle. The finished seawall model passed all of the tests with flying colors. Testing for the 8.5 kilometers long seawall ended in early 2009 and construction began in mid-2009. Today, you can see the daily progress on the Amadu Bello Highway. It has now completed over 6.5 kilometers of the seawall and continues to grow. We are doing everything possible to ensure the highest levels of safety and sustainability at Eco-Atlantic," says Ronald Chagri Jr., Vice Chairman of South Energy X Nigeria Limited, a Chagri Group subsidiary. A large sea revetment being built to the highest standard of marine engineering available today is one of the measures. To achieve this result, we worked with an international team of coastal and marine engineers and conducted physical scale model tests and computer simulations in Denmark. The project would start once the Lagos State Government and South Energy X Nigeria Limited signed the concession agreement. Eco Atlantic started reclaiming land and building the sea revetment. With the help of South Energy X Nigeria Limited, Governors Tainubu, Fashola, and now Imbode have turned a liability into an asset. Building the drainage network in Eco-Atlantic City is a precise task which is repeated numerous times throughout the project. To begin, concrete pipes are fabricated in the pipe factory located in Eco-Atlantic City. Stormwater drainage pipes in the pipe factory vary in size from 30 cm in diameter to the largest being 150 cm in diameter. When the pipes come out from their mold, they are left to cure for three weeks to allow the pipes to achieve full design strength. The technology and methods used to design and install Eco-Atlantic City's stormwater drainage network are best practices worldwide. The stormwater drainage system in Eco-Atlantic City is completely underground. There are no open drains in the city. Having an underground drainage system prevents trash from being dumped into the drainage system and then into the canal. Plastic waste is notorious for clogging drainage systems and interrupting water flow. An underground drainage system also helps prevent mosquito breeding grounds. From a design standpoint, underground drainage allows for sidewalks to be built above the drainage area. Because they are not working on the road, maintenance workers can safely access drains. Also, drainage maintenance does not obstruct traffic flow. Finally, by building and installing its own drainage pipes, Eco-Atlantic City can ensure quality control and standards for both production and installation. The proximity of pipe production to installation reduces delivery time and reduces the frequency of broken pipes during transportation. Mm -hmm. 
Eco Atlantic City began physical construction in 2008. The vision is to create a new city unlike any other on a vast expanse of land reclaimed from the ocean along the coast of Lagos, Nigeria's Victoria Island. By mid-2009, the first rocks for the Great Wall of Lagos had been laid and construction of the seawalls core had begun. Dropping the rocks into the ocean to form the seawalls base was not sufficient. Excavators had to shape and form the rocks. This process was made possible by the fact that all excavators used during the construction process are equipped with a pinpoint accurate GPS system. This GPS system enabled excavators to operate precisely underwater, resulting in a finished product that met all design specifications. After being delivered and formed, the rocks begin to take shape both below and above the water surface. It is now time to begin construction of the seawall's primary armor section. A series of interlocking, X-shaped concrete blocks called acropodes. Each acropode is constructed entirely of reinforced concrete and weighs a total of 5 tons. Eventually, 100,000 acropodes will be placed in a predefined grid, with over 50,000 already placed using a GPS system for pinpoint accuracy. Additionally, samples of the concrete used to construct each batch of acropodes are sent to an independent laboratory for analysis to ensure the concrete reaches the proper strength level. As the final step toward completing the Lagos Great Wall, an 8.5-kilometer-long, 12.5-meter-wide promenade will be constructed on top of the Great Wall. This promenade will provide an abundance of recreational space for residents looking to enjoy the oceanfront open space and breathtaking ocean views. Throughout this process, the designers of the Great Wall of Lagos remain on-site daily to monitor the progress of the seawall's construction and to ensure that the quality of the work meets design standards. There is nothing left to chance. As the wall continued to expand, Victoria Island began to see the benefits of the works taking place two kilometers offshore. The ocean surges that had previously struck Victoria Island had now reached the Great Wall of Lagos. Lagos is already benefiting from the Great Wall of Lagos. Roads that were previously impassable are now motorable. Previously abandoned properties have been redeveloped and reinvested in. Kiramo Waters, which had collapsed and exposed tower foundations to ocean currents, is now once again safe for development. Businesses and residents alike have returned to Victoria Island and the surrounding areas, secure in the knowledge that the once dire threat of ocean surges into the city has been eliminated. Numerous developments and projects have sprouted up since the construction of the Great Wall of Lagos began, demonstrating the wall's positive impact on not only Eco-Atlantic City, but also Lagos as a whole. Eco-Atlantic has reclaimed land lost to over 100 years of coastal erosion on Victoria Island and soon, the early phases of Lekki. The Great Wall of Lagos has reached a total length of 6.5 kilometers, short of the planned 8.5 kilometers. Eco-Atlantic City as a whole has also made significant strides. Over 6,500,000 square meters of land have been recovered to date. The city's independent utilities are already in place. Among these services are a road network, an underground stormwater drainage system, a canal network, water and sewage treatment, and a fiber optic and telecommunications network. Numerous tower developments have been completed and others are currently under construction throughout the city. Additionally, the city is already populated by residents and office tents. We couldn't discuss this project without talking about its downsides as it is usually our opportunity to put our voice out there in unison to those who have had doubts and concerns which need to be cleared. We've even had some people comment on our video made earlier about this project saying it's a waste of money and it's just another step of hypocrisy by the Nigerian government. We don't know how true that is, but we'll appreciate if you leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Local residents living nearby have criticized the Eco-Atlantic project, claiming that ongoing construction has resulted in coastal erosion and ocean surges. As ocean water surges through living areas, flooding access roads, and destroying electricity poles, forcing residents to relocate. Additionally, the Lagos state government has been chastised for failing to engage the public in the project. In August 2012, the Atlantic Ocean surged and overflowed its banks, 
sweeping 16 people into the sea, killing several, and flooding Kiramo Beach, Victoria Island, and surrounding areas. According to an environmental expert, the ocean surge occurred as a result of the contractors responsible for the proposed Atlantic Ocean City's sand filling activities failing to implement measures that would mitigate the effect of the surge on the environment. Eco-Atlantic City and the Great Wall of Lagos are providing a tremendous amount of benefits to both Victoria Island and Lagos as a whole. The city will continue to grow and complete its goal of providing a unique new city with modern and efficient independent infrastructure facilities. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out our special African development playlist because we strongly believe entrepreneurship rather than global pity is the key to Africa's growth and development, so if you're African and you aren't subscribed to our community, you're missing out.